The Philippine president, Rodrigo Duterte, has said he stabbed a person to death as a teenager, in a defiant speech to promote his drug war ahead of a summit of world leaders in Manila. Speaking to the local Filipino community in the Vietnamese city of Da Nang on Thursday, Duterte also threatened to slap a UN rights rapporteur if he met her, and used obscene language to hit back at critics of his deadly drugs crackdown. When I was a teenager, I would go in and out of jail. It have rumbles here, rumbles there, said Duterte, who is in Da Nang for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Apex Summit. At the age of 16, I already killed someone. A real person, a rumble, a stabbing. I was just 16 years old. It was just over a look. How much more now that I am President Duterte won last year's presidential elections after promising to eradicate illegal drugs with an unprecedented crackdown that would see up to 100,000 people killed. Since he took office 16 months ago, police say they have killed 3,967 people. Another 2,290 people were murdered in drug-related crimes, while thousands of other deaths remain unsolved, according to government data. Duterte, 72, remains popular with many Filipinos who believe he is making society safer. But critics at home and abroad say he is orchestrating a campaign of extrajudicial mass murder, carried out by corrupt police and hired vigilantes. He at times denies inciting police or others to kill, but also consistently generates headlines for his abusive language and incendiary comments defending the drug war. Duterte said last year he would be happy to slaughter three million drug addicts and branded then-U.S. President Barack Obama a son of a whore for criticizing the crackdown. Duterte also said in December last year that he had personally shot dead criminal suspects when he was mayor of Southern Davao City to set an example for the police. His then-spokesman later sought to clarify the remarks, saying the killings took place during a legitimate police action. Esquire magazine quoted Duterte as saying in an interview before he became president that he maybe stabbed someone to death when he was 17 years old, in what may be a reference to the incident described in Da Nang. In an election campaign rally, Duterte also said he was expelled from college for shooting a fellow student who was insulting him. The victim reportedly survived. Duterte's aides have repeatedly told journalists not to believe everything the president says, cautioning that he often jokes or indulges in hyperbole. His new spokesman, Harry Roque, indicated that may be the case with his stabbing to death claim. I think it was in jest. The prey uses colorful language when W. Pinoy's Filipinos overseas, Roque said in a text message. In Da Nang, Duterte also targeted the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings, Agnes Kalamud, who has been a frequent critic of the drug war. This rapporteur, he said, after referring to Kalamud by name, I will slap her in front of you. Why? Because you are insulting me. Due to T's latest comments come days before he hosts the U.S. President, Donald Trump, and other leaders for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN Summit. Trump is due to fly into Manila from Vietnam along with other world leaders on Sunday evening before two days of talks. Trump has praised Duterte's handling of the drug war, telling the Philippine leader in a telephone call in April that he was doing a great job. Human rights campaigners have said the summit will be a public relations coup for Duterte, with Trump and other leaders expected to ignore the drug war controversy. Duterte will enjoy the gift of tacit silence from East Asian leaders on his murderous drug war during the upcoming summit, Felim Kine, the deputy Asia director of Human Rights Watch told AFP. Adding to a sense of confidence ahead of the event, Duterte on Thursday also proposed hosting a global summit on human rights in which all nations would be placed under the microscope. Let us investigate all violations of human rights committed by all governments, he said, specifically naming the US, France and Russia.